So hi, uh, my name is Marcio, I'm here to present our tool. Uh, the name of the tool is Emergo, uh, a tool for improving maintainability of preprocessing based product lines. And, um, okay, let's start. So, um, here we have uh, a method with some if steps, okay? That, uh, and these if-defs are used to implement variabilities in product lines. So they can be useful for implementing variabilities in a simple way. But uh, people say a lot of bad things about preprocessors. I mean, it is difficult to understand, it is difficult to, to read or to write, to evolve code. So people say bad things about this idea, although it is very used in practice. So Christian Kashner et al, um, he presented the idea of replacing uh, if defs uh, for colors. So instead of using if defs, I can use colors, and then um, the code is uh, it's better to understand and it's better to read this code. Also, we can hide these features. So for example, if I'm going to enter in this code here, I do not intend, for example, to see the other ones. So I can hide uh, the feature PDF here, that was uh, the PDF here and corruption here. <coughs> so I can hide both features because I, uh, the test that I'm doing right now is not important for me to see this feature or this one. So I can use this idea of virtual separation of concerns. Uh, however, when, when we have features implemented uh, in, in preprocessors, for example, we can have some kind of dependency. So here we have uh, a feature, a mandatory feature, the one that does not contain if defs, and this feature is actually providing this variable error here for this feature PDF. So what is happening is that the PDF feature requires the angle variable of the, the mandatory feature. And in this presentation, we, we're gonna call this a feature dependence. So feature uh, provides elements to, to the others. <coughs> and the problem is that when we have feature dependencies, what it can happen is that developers can actually maintain one feature and break the other ones. And this could happen not only uh, in the context of compilation. So in the context of compilation, I can, for example, remove the error variable. And then when I compile my product line with the PDF feature enabled, we're going to have uh, an undeclared variable error. But also, we can have behavioral errors, which means that I changed the feature and then I broke the other one, the, the, the behavior of this another one. So let's see in this example here. Uh, the developer, instead of using a string, he changed it for an array of strings. And now, this error variable here will never be equals to the empty string. This will never happen. Which means that the PDF button that appears at the graphical user interface of the product uh, will never be enabled because as if it's always false. And actually this leads to uh, productivity problems because detecting these errors can be difficult. I mean, the developers have to compile a product with the, the combination of features, the, the features that contains actually this problematic uh, uh, information, and also they have to execute this product and exercise the part of the product that contains the error. In this case, he will try to click on the PDF button, for example. <coughs> also, we face difficult navigation throughout the code. Trying to find these feature dependencies, uh, developers can uh, have a difficult navigation because they have to click in a, 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 a lot of features, a lot of if devs to see where is the feature dependence. Uh, sometimes the dependencies are not so explicit like the example that I showed before. 
so developers can face this difficult navigation. Um, and this is even worse if the features are hidden. If the, if the developer is, is using techniques like virtual separation of consents where we can hide the features. Because when we hide the features, when we hide completely the feature code, I can't see the feature dependencies anymore. So isn't that the reason why people are afraid of using preprocessor uh, um, declarations? I'm not sure. Because the preprocessor is more a property of the parser than of the language. Maybe. So if you're using variables inside your uh, preprocessor directives, and indeed you remove the variable or you change the type signature, isn't that the reason why preprocessor directives are? Well, I'm not sure if people don't use it. No, I'm not saying people don't use it, but it's like you, you started out by saying, yeah, preprocessor directives have a kind of a bad reputation. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> but isn't that exactly the reason why? Because they're not part of the language semantics, but because they're part of the, the parser? Um, so the I think there are a lot of reasons because people say bad things about if devs. This could be one, and the other would be maybe because it's really difficult to maintain and to read this code. Yeah, because the compiler doesn't have anything meaningful to say. Mm -hmm. Yes, it. yes. So, so this, this kind of errors, the compiler would, would can't see, can see only if the, there is an explicit problem, like here, with, if I compile with this feature enabled, and without this variable, the compiler will point the error. But if I don't use this feature here, Mm -hmm. the, the, the error does not appear. Yeah, you are right. Okay. I, I think the point is that people are using it, so it's still helpful to make their life easier. And I mean, it's not a solution to say, don't do it then, but because there exists software that does it, right? Yeah, okay, I agree with that. And it is a really simple mechanism to do it. Yeah, yeah, simple, but not simple, because now you're talking about all the... No, I mean, I mean, you don't need to learn a language, for example. You don't need to learn Aspect J, for example. It's just really easy. Yeah, this kind of stuff here is very, very simple stuff. It's not like the dynamic evaluation of variables. It's okay, so I agree. It's easy to, to well, to type in or to, to, sure. to okay. provide to, to your uh, compiler, mm -hmm. but the consequences are not so simple, I guess. The maintainability, yeah. so that's what you're... Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, that's what we are trying to software. improve. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's the next slide. So in order to <laughs> minimize <laughs> these problems, uh, we propose the idea of immersion to the face. That are some contracts that happens and that appears between two features. So here we can see a developer that wants to change the string for an array of strings. The example that we mentioned previously. And the idea of immersion to the face is to first select the maintenance points. So we could have a lot of maintenance points for my task, and then I would select those points and ask for, a, for an interface. So what happens here is that the developer selects the maintenance point, in this case just one. Um, we perform some code analysis based on static analysis, a specialized way of static analysis that I will uh, tell a little bit more about this. And then an interface emerges for the developer. That's why we call immersion interface. So the contract emerges to the developer says something, oh, you are providing this able variable to the PDF feature. So be careful with that. After changing this variable, please take a look on the PDF feature or something like that. And he could Think about it, okay, he read this information here, oh, okay, I'll take a look. And probably this will minimize uh, the problems that we discussed previously. So for example, the latent error detection problem would be minimized because when reading this information, the developer is susceptible to go to the PDF feature and see the problem. And also we can reduce the difficult navigation problem. I mean. Um, when we have a lot of if devs, things got uh, complicated. A lot of if devs to look at, to analyze, and then uh, the emergent interface is focusing only on the feature that you should look at. 
So the other ones you can abstract. So uh, the idea is to minimize this difficult navigation throughout the code to find the feature dependencies. And how we capture these feature dependencies? Uh, this was presented uh, by Klaus yesterday, the paper of Interprocedural Data Flow Analysis for Software Product Lines, where the idea is to provide a data flow analysis that takes features into consideration. So here we have our mandatory feature that the developer is selecting, and our PDF feature, our optional PDF feature, and then we would perform some data flow analysis considering these features. <coughs> so, for example, the first one would consider this piece of code here, uh, this feature PDF, and another data flow analysis could actually jump this feature, this piece of code here. So, this data flow analysis tool is not taking the PDF feature into consideration. So, we're going to do for all valid configurations according to the feature model of the product line. And as we can see, data flow analysis number one, uh, we have information that the AMO variable requires uh, the declaration of such a variable. And as we can see, this data flow one, uh, where the maintenance point, point is, provides actually this AMO variable. So we connect things and then we provide the interface. Okay, so um, after talking a little bit about these conceptual things, we are going to show now our tool that actually computes emergent interfaces. And it is a tool based on Eclipse. Okay, so here we can see two views. The first view is a table, as you can see here, and the other one is a graph. So we're going to do actually the same as we did in the slides. We're going to select the maintenance point, and then uh, the Emergo will compute this image interface and show to the user in terms of a table and in terms of a graph. So let's see. Okay, so as I told you, we have here the table view and the graph view. Both will contain elements of our interface. Okay, so we are going to start with two toy examples. So, product lines that also that only contains one class. It's not a it's just a toy example, just to to see and to get used to the tool. Here we have a Tetris canvas class. Okay, and we have two, two features. Can you see? Can you read? I think it's okay, right? So we have a feature based on standard Java code and another based on micro edition code. Okay? So let's say that the developer wants to change this point here. So they want to change the value of this variable, the type. I don't know. Okay? What he could do is to select the maintenance point, as we did, and ask for the tool. I'm going to press Ctrl 9, that is the shortcut of our tool. And the tool will compute um, the image interface for this point. Okay. So I'm going to expand here. And what we can see is that um, the tool is, point to, is pointing to some place that the code that can be impacted from this maintenance point here. So if I'm going to change x center variable, I could impact, for example, line number 22. Let's see. So line 22 is using x center, as you can see here. So if I change the variable, if I change the value of this variable, I can impact this point here. In the same way, we can see that we can impact number the, the, the line number 25, also it contains the X-Center variable, and also 
line number 30 here at the center. Uh, as you can see, we have the, 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 the features here, not microedition and microedition. Uh, and we can see that the points here, we, you could click on the, on the view and the editor will highlight the code that corresponds to this, to this line here. And also, we have the graph view that represents the yellow node, this, the maintenance point that you selected, and here is the point that you can impact. Okay, so now let's now uh, let's select another line. So let's select this one. Okay, so let's ask the two. I can actually uh, press Control Nine or use the the menu like here and ask for generate the interface. Well, what's happening now? Now the interface contains only one element. And why is this happening? So I want to change X center here. And yeah, I can impact this place here. But wait, accent is or is also here. Why I'm not impacting this place too? It's because of the feature model of the product line. So if you open our file here, if that the txt that represents our feature model, you can see this. So here we can define our features and also the feature model of the product line. So I'm saying. What I'm saying is that both features are alternative. They can never be together in the same product. Which means that I can change the value of this variable for anything I want. And this will never impact this code here because this code will never be together with this one in the same product. Okay, so let's go to another example. Close here. Your example is um, Little piece of code that I extracted from from Linux. Uh, of course, I had I had to translate to Java, but it's an interesting result. It's an interesting code example. So let's say that I want to change this upper size variable here. I want to change to I don't know 2,048 instead of 1,000, something like that. So again, we can select the maintenance point and ask for the tool for the interface. Okay, so what's going on here? The tool is saying that I can impact line number 19, but, well, I wanted to change upper size, and I cannot see upper size here. But if you see, if I change upper size, upper size is being used here, which means that I can impact YOMO pages variable. So that's because of this chain of assignments, I can also impact this point here. So you can see better in this graph, so here, uh, here is our maintenance point. And if I change upper size, upper size is being used here, I can change more page and then I can impact this code here. Okay, moving on. Now we have a mobile media product line that maybe some of you or everybody knows. Um, and this, the code is complete. It's not a toy example anymore. And let's open this class here. Um, so now let's see. Um, we want to change uh, this. Let's see. Let's say that we want to change this this variable next controller here. Okay, so as you can see, we have a copy feature here and an SMS feature here too. So let's see, let's um, generate the interface. You can see that uh, the tool will take a few seconds to generate now because we have a bigger product line. Okay, but it was fast. Um, oh, by the way, when we have more than one element in our product line, as you can see, I can change, I can group by other things. So let's see, I can, I would like to, to group by description now. So here we have our abstract controller, that is this line here, and then we have the same information, but in a different way. But I like the, the other one. Okay, so the first thing that the tool 
actually, as you can see here, this, the graph is uh, a little bit bigger. But when we click on one element of the interface, this graph uh, got reduced. So let's see. So if I click here, we can see that, well, I'm going to change this place here. So maybe I could impact this point here. So the graph uh, focus on this path. Let's see the other one. So we click. Oh, so yeah, I'm changing next controller here, and maybe I could impact this point here. But wait, next controller is being reassigned here. There is another assignment. So why I'm going to change next controller there, and I will impact this point here? That's because it's a product line. It's not a product anymore. So if I have products without copy feature, I mean, without this code here, then I will impact this place. So that's why our graph is telling us something like that. So if I change that place, I can impact this one for the following configuration, with the SMS feature and without copy. Okay? Um, in the other place, it's in another class. So what's happening here? We are not doing an intra-procedure analysis. We are doing inter-procedure analysis. So in Amerigo, you can um, um, set these things uh, by clicking on the project properties. And then Amerigo, sorry. And then you can set, oh, for this project, I want to run inter-procedure analysis and the other one, intra, and so on. These other two parameters is just to, um, because data flow analysis can be very slow, we can actually set some parameters to make it faster. So for example, instead of computing dependencies this method that calls this one, that calls this one, that calls this one, that calls this one, a lot of things. We can say, oh, stop on two calls. Done. So the, inter the, the interface will be generated faster. In the same way, we have monovariant and polyvariant analysis. And that's actually, I can see here that I'm just saying that um, the number of different CFGs that will be constructed for the same method calls would be only two, okay? Actually, of course, we are losing some precision, but we are gaining some speed. Okay, so I'm coming back to the presentation now just to, to show you an usage scenario mm -hmm. of Mergo. Okay, so mobile media is a product line where you can build products and you can um, add images, update them, remove them, and not only image but also music and video and stuff like that. So let's say that now we have a server that provides us some images. So we call this server and it returns some random images. But the server that we are using right now only returns EPS and PNG images, okay? Just these two formats. So our maintenance task that we are going to do right now uh, consists of changing for a better server that returns not only EPS and PNG images, but also PDF forms, okay? So this is gonna be our maintenance task here. So the question is, do we need to change other places? So changing the server, changing the server address is enough, or do we need to change another places? So let's see if Emergo can help us in this context.
Okay, so uh, here we have the our actual server, and this one. Remember that it returns only EPS and PNG features, not PDF yet. And then we want to change these address. We want to change actually the value of this string to another server that you uh, find is better. So the idea is to change this string here so uh, it's clear our maintenance point. So just select it. So what I'm intending here is to, oh, I'm going to change it. So let's see if I'm going to impact the other places. So the first thing, first thing is just to select and ask Imago for immersion interface. Okay, as you can see here, there's a, a lot of places that I can impact, but remember that when we click here, we can just um, remove some nodes that are not interesting right now. So let's see. Well, it's quite obvious that if I change server here, I can impact this place here and this place here. Because if I change um, server, server is being used in the loading image, that is being uh, attributed to, the, is to this image variable here. So these two places are being shown here. So 82, okay. You see, the graph was reduced. And 83. Okay, so if I change server, server is being used here, that defines image, and the image is being used here. Okay, the other places are 15. Yeah, as you can see, I'm calling load image passing this new server. So I see the, the, this method code and I analyze it and yeah, maybe nothing is going wrong here. The other place would be this one. Yeah, this is where I call show image. And the last one would be this one. So let's navigate through all the code a little bit. So if I change server, I can impact this line here. And server is being, it's, it's helps to define image. Image is here. Uh, we call show image, this, this method. And then there is a, a, this image will be bound with this image to show, and the image to show will be attributed to image. And then we call photo view screen that passes this image. And then we have our constructor here, and then we find this e IMG variable that is being bound to this image variable. So let's see. When we got at this point, we can see uh, something related to image formats. I mean, we have EPS. Um, if I know the system, of course, I could remember, oh, I know this rule. I put just these comments here uh, to be easy to explain, but there is a feature called zoom that you could zoom images, but only vector ones. So now our server is returning not only EPS, but also PDF, and PDF is also a vector format. So I need to change also this place here. So I could put or Blah, 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 equals PDF. And then my maintenance would be complete. Okay, I guess this is my last slide, 30 minutes. So thank you, and I'll be happy to answer some questions. So I'm wondering if inside an if dev block you have a, an if test. With, let's say if x, and x can be in, well, let's just say if x. And then uh, outside of the if dev block you have uh, x equals something, right? And 
you want to see what happens if you change that x variable or, or something that is used inside the condition that